Hey everybody, it's GED question of the daytime. And once again, we've just been given these kind of vague directions to simplify. And I would remind you that we simplify um, expressions and simplifying means to just perform the operations that those uh, symbols um, are telling you to perform, um, to obey the uh, signs, as I see, like to say. Um, and so I see some operations down here. So let's take a look at what we see. I'm just going to write this down. Simplify means to perform the indicated operations. I see a few signs and symbols that indicate an operation. Um, obviously, I see this subtraction sign. I got to cut numbers on either side. There's some subtraction to do. I see this is called a radical uh, with this little number here, um, the index of the radical. So that is a cube root, not a square root. Square roots um, don't have that number floating in the check mark. This is a cube root. And then I also see an exponent. So um, I have a few different operations um, to perform here. Whenever you have an expression with more than one operation to perform, you are subject to those that lovely order of operations that I just won't stop harping about. Uh, Again, it applies to you every time there's more than one thing to do. Okay, so the order of operations is first groupings. Then uh, groupings, and I usually call it Gemma to help myself remember. And then E for exponents and their inverses. So exponents and their inverses. And then three, the M is for multiplication and its inverse division. And then finally A, which stands for addition and subtraction. And look at that, I, I got through the order of operations without messing it up this time. It's like a miracle. Okay, so I'm going to be performing my things in this order, my operations in this order. Uh, first thing, do we see any uh, groupings, um, things that are held off from the problem, um, uh, things uh, that are inside? Um, there's uh, something inside this cube root here, but it's just one number, negative 64. There's nothing, no work to do in here, so not really any groupings here. But what I do see is some exponents. I see some powers, the little floating numbers, and a radical or a root, this cubed root. And so I'm going to start by doing those two operations. And I can do them both at the same time because they are not, they don't share any numbers. See how they're, they're separated from each other with this minus sign. Uh, they're totally distinct uh, little bits of the expression. And so I'm going to deal with them. Now, it's actually probably easier to do this piece first. If you watched the last uh, question of the day video, or if you've ever watched the intro to exponents video, this is super simple. Um, one to the fifth power it just means that the number one is multiplying by itself five times. Now the mistake a lot of students make is that they don't write out the work over here, and they end up telling you that one to the fifth power is five. Be really careful, your brain will want to just multiply these numbers one and five, but that's not what this problem means. This problem means multiply one by itself five times. Well, what is one times one? Think about it, what is it? Yeah, it's just one, isn't it? I don't care how many times I multiply that one by itself, and just go ahead and multiply one by one again, guess what I'm gonna get? Yeah, you're feeling it. Every time I multiply one by one, all I ever get is one. So it really doesn't matter how many times you raise one to its uh, a power. You're only ever going to get one. So that part of the problem gives me one. And that's the first place where the GED will trick you. Second place where the GED will trick you is you guys don't like um, cube roots a lot of the times. Students that I have will just like totally ignore this little three here. They're like, it doesn't exist. And try to do this as a square root problem. No way, this is a cube root problem. I'm asking, what number? Ooh, I need a new color. Let me try that one more time. <laughs> so, remember that roots are the opposite of powers. So I'm asking, what number cubed is equal to negative 64? Again, this is an inverse problem. Roots are the opposite of powers. So I'm asking, what number cubed is equal to negative 64? 
Well, if it was eight, eight is way too huge, which is the number I get most often. Eight times eight is already 64. If I were to multiply eight by itself again, it would be giant. You know, I'd be way up 500 something too big. It must be something smaller than that. So if you're not sure, if you don't have your perfect cubes memorized, you're, you're going to have no option but to guess and check. So let's just guess. Let's guess two. Well, what is two cubed? Well, two times two is four, and four times another two would be eight. Mm, too small. Okay. Now I'm going to guess even numbers because I happen to know that when I multiply even numbers, I get even numbers. So it's got to be even. It can't be an odd. So I'm going to look at the next one. Four cubed, four cubed. Let's see. Four times four is 16. Oh, I might have run out of coolness. Four times four is 16. And 16 times four would be what, guys? 16 times four would be 64. Hey, look at that. What number times itself three times is 64? The number four. But be, do be cautious. Notice this was not just regular 64. This was negative 64. And so let's think about this. Negative four times negative four times negative four. If I cubed negative four, would I get negative 64? Well, we already did the math for four times four times four. We know that's 64. A negative times a negative is a positive. And if I multiply that by another negative, negate it again, guess what? That would be negative 64. So that was a lot of work to figure out the cube root um, of negative 64 is negative 4. I am telling you, it sure pays off to have your first eight or so perfect cubes memorized. Then you don't have to do any of the mental work we just did. If you know one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed, and six cubed, you probably already know higher than the GED will ever take you. That's what, six facts to learn? Anyway, might be worth it. Might want to bust out a flashcard. But anyway, so the cubed root of negative 64 is negative 4. Um, 1 to the fifth power was 1, and but I haven't done the subtraction yet, so I dropped down my minus sign. Okay, so now my new problem, my new expression, I should say, is negative 4 minus 1. Well, if I'm already $4 in debt, and I go and borrow another dollar, I'm going to be even deeper in debt, and so I'm at negative 5. Great, tricky little problem. I don't even know if anyone got that right. I'm going to have to go back and look. But um, certainly if you have any questions about this, you should ask. Drop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Um, if there are some prerequisite skills that you were not getting, you should definitely understand exponents um, in order to do this. And you have got to know a little bit about cube roots. Those are the two skills that really got involved there, not to mention the order of operations. Okay, great. Uh, look out for the next question of the day, and I'll see you later.